Welcome, Stella. Welcome, Aster. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, Rita. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to grab your phone and text some partners and friends and clients. Hello, beautiful souls. Hi, Drew and Dorothy. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. Well, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us in our Million Mom Movement community. My name is Michelle Ricci, and I have been with the Million Mom Movement for just a little over two months now. And I'm so passionate about what we're doing here. Um, and I think that the topic of this week really sends it home for me. Our families, our family's transformation, our kids being healthy and having great choices and just everybody feeling good in their body and getting along. And so that's what we're doing here at the Million Mom Movement. We're helping to educate and bring awareness to uh, pesticides and family health and what a great topic. So I'm joined by my beautiful counsel, Naeva and Carmela, and we have special guests today, Erica and Kaipo Mai and Kahlo and Aramir Kloster and uh, Sherry Jordan and Nathan Packard. So I'm so excited for this call. I hope you have questions for the kids. Maybe some of you have your kiddos with you. So let's um, get started. Today is... Uh, December 16th, welcome to Fierce Friday. We're doing family transformations and uh, testimonials, and we're focusing on getting off the new year to a good start, setting ourselves up for success um, with healthy habits. This is where we come as a community of concerned caregivers, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, anybody who's ever been a kid or has kids or knows kids. <laughs> we come together as a movement of many to grow this mission. So kids first, family first. And I wanted to start off by saying that I know I hear from many moms and dads and caregivers, how do you get kids to eat healthy? And this question is real, right? Children are marketed to with brightly colored packages um, and fun characters and who can blame them, right? We're designed to be attracted to bright fruit on the vine. And marketers have come to understand this intrinsic system and have been capitalizing on it ever since. So stay tuned because we're gonna get down to the bottom of it and find out from the kids themselves when and why they got into the superfood groove and why they love it so much. So let's get the party started. I would like to pass to Naeva and she's gonna share in the news an article on how to keep kids healthy this winter. Naeva. Thank you so much, Michelle. And yeah, this is a struggle I feel like for all of us, not moms only, um, but it's a constant struggle, right? We're constantly being bombarded at the grocery store with all these crazy things. And so I'm actually gonna bring a couple articles to you. This one is three simple things for handling junk food during the holiday season. So we all know we're trying to avoid the junk food. So holiday season comes with the opportunity to indulge in so many favorite holiday treats, especially if you're going back to see relatives and family and maybe they don't align with your lifestyle or the choices that you make. And so so we're bombarded with these things, right? So while these foods are an important part of many holiday celebrations and our family traditions that maybe we've created over the generations, and they probably have evolved over time, um, ch children often overindulge in treats and often on, end up in meltdowns or having tummy aches. We, As moms, we all know the repercussions, right? So having a plan is really important. So before the holiday event or party, take time to think about the different ways that you can can, you know, keep them healthy and hydrated, give them those superfoods ahead of time to make sure they're getting all their nutrients, right? Plan to bring a healthy dish to ensure a variety of foods. So if there's not a lot of vegetables or salads available, maybe that is your opportunity to bring those options to the traditional holiday party and create that as part of the tradition. Um, eat a healthy hol a meal beforehand, right? So if you're already eaten, then you're not as hungry, you're not going to indulge in so many other things things that are maybe offered and then commit to filling your plate with the nutritious foods before indulging in all the holiday treats right so moderation is key to enjoying your favorite holiday treats and not overdoing it 
be intentional and try setting a limit on how many sweet treats um, you want yourself or your kids to eat, your family members, and then remember the reason for the season, right? It's about getting together. It's about family. It's about games, catching up, family and friends, all the fun things, sharing recipes. Something that I like to do is giving away recipes, like give somebody a little recipe with a little jar of superfoods to make with those recipes. And that makes a great gift for a holiday party. So another article, same, um, same kids county learning centers. I was looking through what they had to offer and I was inspired. So this is eight tips for keeping kids healthy this winter. And winter has finally arrived and unfortunately so has the cold and flu season while winter should be time for sipping hot cocoa and building snowmen or sandmen out here in Hawaii. It's often overtaken by germs, infections and illness. So we wanna help boost our immune system, our children's immune system, our family's immune system. And since children are especially prone to illness, you'll need to take the extra steps to keep the kids healthy during the winter. So here's eight steps for building a strong immune system and keeping our family healthy. So provide kids with more immune boosting foods and drinks. And that's what we're all about here at the Million Mom Movement, right? Is providing solutions for moms because we already know how hard it is out there in the everyday life. And so the stronger your child's immune system is going into the cold and flu season, the better. One of the best ways to boost the immune system is with vitamins and nutrient rich foods and drinks. So try to incorporate the following foods into your children's diet this winter. Well, if you're not vegetarian, beef contains a lot of zinc, but we also have zinc aid, right? So whether or not you eat you know, animal products. We have zinc aid to help fill that. And zinc aid is an incredible way to boost your immune system. And my kids actually love it. They'll, my son Kainoa will actually take the zinc aid and chew it up. And it is a little bit sour, but he doesn't mind. Um, fruits that contain vitamin C, oranges, pomegranates, strawberries, raspberries, all those yummy fruits. Kids love these fruits and they're colorful. So have fun with them, cut them up into bite-sized pieces, you know, Food is fun if you make it fun. Um, garlic, not all kids love garlic, but there are some really fun creative ways that you could put them into food. My kids love garlic toast, so maybe that's a good way to get it in with some fresh garlic and butter, or coconut oil is also a great alternative to butter on toast. Um, yogurt for probiotics. We also have our advanced probiotics from Purium and much less your home uh, much like your home requires extra energy to stay warm during the winter, your children's body require extra nutrients to fight the viruses and infections when they do strike. So limiting sugar because sugar brings down your immune system. So from Thanksgiving to Valentine's Day, you know, through the whole holidays, we're eating a lot of sugar. It's every holiday has sugar in it. So it's really important that we boost our children's immune system. So that, that way the sugar that is um, consumed will not bring them down and get them sick. Right. And we want it obviously in small portions and we want the healthy sugar. So increasing sugar consumption, is not only, um, depresses the immune system. It also causes systemic inflammation. So as a result, kids who eat a lot of sugar become likely uh, candidates for colds and flus and other viruses. And then staying hydrated, we all know how important hydration is. So you can, you know, water, obviously the first thing, but we have so many ways to make our water fun with aloe digest, right? A really great way um, with the cocoa hydrate and so many other things that we provide here at Purium. So make sure your children get enough sleep. Sleep is so important. So making sure they get enough rest throughout the holidays. I know it's an exciting time, but going to bed at a reasonable hour really helps everybody be in a better mood and get through the holidays with less stress and more ease. And then encourage your kids to relax, right? Encourage them to relax. Between the holiday parties and the traveling, visiting friends and family members, shopping for holiday gifts, winter is super busy time. So while adults can handle the increased stress, children's immune system tend to weaken amid the hustle and bustle. So on top of making sure your kids get enough sleep at night, encouraging them to relax each day, whether you choose to, you know, watch a favorite movie together or play a fun game, you know, it's really important to make sure that they're relaxing. So change your children's toothbrushes, right? I always trying to take care of those germs. So 
I know that I try to switch them out every um, three months if I can. And now we have these new bamboo toothbrushes available out there in the marketplace that are absolutely incredible. And we're really loving those. And I don't feel bad about throwing them away once they start to, you know, get old. And so that's part of taking care of our teeth and our germs. And we're actually on that. I'm just going to do a quick little drop on Carmela's Wednesday feature next week with the dentist. So if you want to hear all about teeth and dentistry, Carmela is going to do a lunch and learn next Wednesday. Um, all about that. And we'll talk about that more later at the end of the call. So, you know, teaching our kids to wash their hands. So that way they're not spreading germs that way is really important. And then know when you have to take your kids to the doctor. We're all, we all want to be holistic moms and do our very best. And we all know when it is the right time to take them to the doctor if that is needed. But we have so many ways to support their immune system that hopefully that is not the key and we can stay out of um, the doctor's offices this winter. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to you, Michelle. Thanks, Neva. Wow, that was Amazing. Thank you for all of those tips and, and for going so deep. We really do have a lot of support here. Um, my son is 22 years old and he's a college student. And when he was young, I really had a lot of control over what he ate. And we used to, um, you know, have an accountability system. You can have an apple, you can have a granola bar. It was kind of fruit first and he's a professional <laughs> athlete. Um, at a young age and we were always on the go and actually the the academy that he played for in soccer had nutrition uh, consultations so we had a really great schedule we didn't have perium in our lives well fast forward to college years you know my son got there and i really had no influence over him I mean, he makes good choices. And I think that first year there was some beer <laughs> probably, right? And some of the things that are less desirable, he's eating off of a buffet at a college. Um, and in that first year of school, he had to have an emergency appendectomy. I mean, I guess all appendectomies are emergencies. So, um, and it was scary, right? So I knew that it was a result of the dramatic, drastic change in his eating habit. And he might have thought about it, but he certainly didn't want to hear about it. But now fast forward, he's a senior in college, and um, I he started asking for it. Um, he came home one, uh, I think, at the beginning of with a with the virus, and I put him on a ULT plus immune, and within three days, he was feeling so much better. It was hard to keep him here for ten days, isolating. So from that point on, he's always had the, the core five um, in his, in his regimen. So he does the, the power shake, he does the aminos, he does the zinc aid, he does the biomedic, and he does the, the tart cherry. And he doesn't really want to talk about it, but he, he'll call me and say, I need aminos, or can you order me some more? So it's nice that as he's moving into his adult body that he is starting to pay attention and he's um, he does go to places like Whole Foods to do his grocery shopping and just you know buy a little less and and so that buy more fruits and vegetables and less of the meat because he has the power shake and he has the superfood nutrition. So it's really um, neat to see him come full circle like this. And you know the truth is is that. Our kids, we can influence them and we can make suggestions and we can do the best that we can. And they're still going to be in the world and have to make choices when it comes down to it. So I wanted to bring on Erica, <clears throat> excuse me, Erica Kloster and um, talk about her kids and her family because um, her kids were kind of at all different ages when she started using Perium in the household. So, and I know. Um, Taipo Mai is 14, Erica, and um, Kalo is 10, and Aramir is 8, and I would love to just talk to you about what it's like in your household, what's lighting your kids up, and I know you took some videos, so please join us. Beautiful. Thanks for inviting me to share here today. Um, always love coming to join the Million Mom Movement. It's so fantastic what's happening inside here. So as you said, I am a mother of five. Um, currently their ages are from 8 to 18 
And when I started to bring Purium into my life, that was six years ago. So there's a big difference between sharing Purium with a two-year-old and an 18-year-old. Um, so I've seen the whole range of like being able to really provide and orchestrate what our kids eat and then having to totally let go as a mom because they're fully wanting to individuate and make their own choices, right? Um, I would say I have some fun videos to share. I don't want to talk too much. You can hear right from my kids because that's really um, where the heart of the matter is today. But as a mom, I will say one of the things that I've done consistently to try to set those foundational seeds for choosing to eat healthy and cultivating that relationship with um, loving that, knowing that it tastes good, it feels good, is that throughout my kids' lifetime, I've always made really accessible to them fresh foods right that's always like the focus in our kitchen it's like the main part of what's on our table what's in our baskets out there um, fresh fruits vegetables we do a lot of gardening at home i'm always having my kids help uh, have a relationship with plants like growing greens and beans on the vine and herbs and i'll ask them to pick things before dinner so they're connected to uh the sources of their vegetables and therefore they get more excited about eating them um, i always involve my kids in food prep always ask them you know what they're interested in eating but i really bring them in right and we like to highlight like the smells and the flavors and touches of all the different things we get excited to eat together. So it's a way to um, enjoy one of the best parts of life, which is eating and, and being together with the ones we love when we're doing it. So I always try to uh, set that as the tone in our family for um, enjoying meals together and, and having them be um, healthy as a reoccurring theme in our home. So I'm gonna see if I can do the sheet screen share feature here. And, and while you're getting that set up, I really love that you, like how amazing is it that you can connect them right to the food that's growing in the ground. And w even if we can't, we can still involve our kids in the prep, in the shopping and getting excited and how to make their meals. Yeah. How can I support you, Erica? Okay. Uh, I think I've got it. Okay, great. And let me just make sure to share it. sound too. Let me just try to hit the share and let me see if I've got this. Sorry, this is my first time. That's okay. And yep, okay, great. Okay. You might have to make sure the audio is on. <laughs> I already love it. Let's see, Erica, you might have to check sound. Okay. And what we can do, um so I, I think i got it so i have brought to you voices of two other young boys here these are the two youngest of my five children and so we have Kahlo over here tell us how old are you Kahlo? 10. and this is aramer how old are you aramer eight eight okay what are you guys enjoying right now christmas fruit Fruit. What kind of fruit is that? Lilikoi. So uh, they're enjoying a lilikoi, which is uh, also the Hawaiian name for a passion fruit. Maybe you know it. Um, and I would ask you guys, um, now that we're here to talk a little bit about what you love about healthy eating, how do you feel about fruit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they love fruit. Fruit is one of the things that I would say they gravitate to the most. Um, I try to always have big fruit baskets full of fresh, colorful, vibrant, delicious fruit that is right front and center in our kitchen so that when my kids come into the kitchen, that's one of the first things they'll gravitate to to start eating before they even think about what else they would like to eat. So tell me about some of your favorite things to eat. Fruit! What, what kind of fruits do you love the most? I like 
Dragonfruit and stra strawberries. Yum. How about you, Carlo? I like tangerines and papaya and mango. Mango. Awesome. Also you can tell. Mango um, and tangerine. <laughs> These, and papaya. these kids love their tropical fruits. So um, we definitely make um, fresh food coming right off the land here, a main part of our diet. And I know you guys love to make fruit smoothies, often when they have their friends over to play and they're outside and they're really active doing sports and they get hot and they get thirsty, they come in and they're excited about what do you like to make? Smoothies. Smoothies, right? And what do you love to put in your smoothies? Power shake. Poo berries. Nice. And what have you noticed about um, how you feel after you have the smoothies? <laughs> so I seem to remember that the last time we made smoothies with you and your friends, you guys were all saying that you notice that when we add power shake and some of the other powders to the smoothies that it actually tastes a lot better is that true yes. mm -hmm. yeah it tastes sweeter you guys like yeah. power shake smoothies right and what else do you like to make with um some of the puriam superfoods the little mm. granola balls that you make oh yeah sometimes we make like little um, nut and dried fruit, uh, snack bars, um, grinding up some of the uh, dried goods with the Purium powders. <laughs> and it's really good. what else do you guys like to make with the superfoods? Um, power shakes. <laughs> power shakes. Yeah. Sometimes they like to make the popsicles too, uh, like little silicone pops they can fill with smoothie or shakes and freeze those for nice frozen treats. And didn't we make some hot chocolate the other night? No. Yes, we were. That was yes. pretty good, right? The peppermint bark hot chocolate. Oh, that. And what are you, some of the other superfood powders that you love to drink the most? Chocolate power Kids. <laughs> chocolate Kids, Power Shake. Awesome. What have you noticed um, feeling in your body when you make a choice to eat things that are super nutritious for you? I feel good. Like what yeah. way do you feel good? Real good. <laughs> what do you notice? Feels um energy. Yeah, more energy. How about you, Carlo? How about like you love to play sports, right? Yeah. Do you notice it helps you to have like good nutrition when you go to do sports? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Carlo. Is always impressed with his six pack over here. <laughs> but these kids, on all honesty, are awesome athletes. They play sports pretty much every day, all year long, and they burn a lot of calories and they definitely are always looking to replenish themselves. We love to have the convenience and the nutrient density of superfoods on the go, and I would say that. Both of you guys are excellent athletes. Would you say that? Oh, yes, yes sir. <laughs> I'm better at quarterback. Love it. That's so great, Erica. <laughs> All right. And let me queue up one more I have to share today. All right. Is this helping everyone? Hello, I mean, how my is name this? Is Erica Kloster, and I'm here. Hello. With Go ahead. Aloha, my name is Erica Kloster and I'm here with my 14 year old daughter, Kaipo Mai. And we wanted to share a little bit more from the teenage girl perspective about healthy eating and Purium superfood nutrition, which has been such a blessing in my life and the life of my five children. So uh, I'd love to hear from you if you would raise your voice and um, just share a little bit more. Um, what's it like to be aware of what it means to eat healthy? Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, some of your favorite foods, some of what you love um, in the Purium Superfoods, maybe how you like to eat them or some of your favorite products and 
Maybe you could share a little bit more about how you have noticed the relationship between how you feel and what you're eating. Mm, I think out of all the PRM products, my f top favorites are Cocoa Mint Spirulina, the Chocolate Kids, Can't Beat This, and Super Xanthan. I like the like cocoa mint spirulina and the chocolate i use those in like smoothies or puddings that i make usually for breakfast and they're really good and the can't beat this and xanthan are like for if i ever do like gymnastics or athletic stuff i'll use that for extra energy i remember once i was doing gymnastics and at first i was like super sore after but then when I started taking the Super Xanthan, I like didn't have any muscle pains after. And that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, do you notice how you feel good when you eat things that are really clean and nutritious and <coughs> don't have a bunch of toxins in them? It feels more natural to eat like that because I've been eating like that my whole life. Mm -hmm. And how is it uh, when you go out in the world and you have some of your peers around you or um, at gatherings or school lunches when you're faced with lo lots of choices, um, what is it that makes you want to choose something healthy for yourself? It's because I know the food I eat compared to what they eat and I've been raised on that food, so I'm used to it, and I'm confident taking it to school for school home lunches and eating what I want because I want to eat it, not just because everyone else eats, like, say, Cheetos or Takis or some snack like that. I wouldn't eat that just for the popul popularity because I know the effect. Can you tell me some of your most favorite things to eat if you thought about what is super delicious and also healthy? Fruit salad, um, juices, melons. If you would give a piece of advice to other teens out there um, around <laughs> the value in healthy eating, what would you say? Mm. don't be pressured to be like everyone else if you feel like eating a lot of food or if you feel like eating no food eating healthy unhealthy food just do what you want to just be yourself just be yourself right yeah. and you know young people are at that point where you're starting to learn how to make your own choices and like follow an uh, independent pathway. Um, you're getting to an age where you're going to be making your own food. Not everything's going to be put in front of you. Not always are you going to have your parent there telling you what to eat and what not to eat. So what is it that uh, helps you make decisions about your diet? Mm, I think how I feel in that moment has the biggest effect. Because I eat what I feel like eating, and well, no matter what, it will most likely be healthy food. So it just matters how my body feels before, during, and after eating it. Mm -hmm. I notice you've, like, had your hair grow really thick and long and beautiful, and you seem to have really clear, vibrant skin, and good mental clarity like tell me a little bit about what you're feeling you know noticing about yourself from the inside out mm, I feel carefree my hair definitely feels a lot really soft and clean and I just feel confident fantastic mm. Some of my favorite things about PRM are how convenient it is. It's it's really easy, like you can just bring a bottle of powder, get some water, shake it up together, and you got like a meal, and that's good. It's healthy. Yeah. How about the taste? Tastes pretty good. 
most of the time. <laughs> oh, Mama, that's so great. We must be proud, right? And aren't we all, even we can just get a little in, let alone a conversation like that and, and the superfood mama that she's becoming. And how cool is that when we can connect them to their bodies and they are making the choice to do that, right? And the confidence just pours through because when your digestive tract is settled, your life is easier to digest. And how mm -hmm. awesome would it have been to go through high school and not have to worry about the skin and the hair and be able to just feel like you're glowing and notice the difference. So how amazing. I really love the work that you're doing, Erica. You're a good mama. We're all good mamas and caregivers, and we just want the best for our kiddos. And thank you so much for setting such a great example. Really appreciate you. Is there anything that you want to add before we bring Sherry on? I would just say okay. thanks so much for having me. I don't know if there's an echo, but we're good. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to be here. And the one thing that I'll leave with is um, I just really love reminding children to notice how they feel when they eat. So I'm always bringing them back to making those connections, because if they do that throughout their whole childhood, it'll be an automatic when they're teens and adults, when they're making their own choices. So I'm always asking them just to, to make those awarenesses and it's great to see them actually like living it and doing it as young people. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, thank you so much, Erica. And it's really true, right? I think that's what I saw with Jesse. He was a high performance athlete. He went to school. He went to go do the college thing. He got into some trouble. And then he course corrected because he did remember there was some kind of a memory in his body cellularly that when he started ingesting superfoods um, that you know he could connect to and so i really love that that's what you're doing and i think we can all take a lot from that so thanks again and now we're going to bring on um sherry and jordan and nathan so welcome to the call <laughs> see we got you unmuted there perfect yeah. and who do you have there with you sherry so I have my son, Jordan, who's 12, and I have Nathan, who's 10. Hi, you guys. I'm so glad that you came to the call because I know I have some questions for you. And um, maybe even some people from the field at the end of the call might have some questions for you as well. So um, let's start with uh, Big Brother. Jordan, you're a hockey player, I hear. And do you do that competitively? Yes, I do. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, I started when I was six. Okay. So, so you're practically a pro right now. <laughs> and have you always had a superfood lifestyle or was there something that came about that moved you into that direction? How did you, um, yeah, let's start with that question. Well, we really started superfoods after I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Okay, got it. And how old were you when that happened? I was eight, right? I was eight. eight. So were you excited to try something that might help you or did it take some convincing? Did it feel hard at first? It felt hard at first because I like to have like my meat for a supper. I was, yeah. and pizza. I was probably <laughs> one Yeah, and so how did you, um, how long did it take you to notice that you were feeling better without that stuff? Maybe like a week or two, a week or two yeah. About and did your numbers drastically improve as well? They did. Mm -hmm. And They're what still... else? Yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Mom. I was going to, yeah, I know I was going to say it was, a, it, it was, first it was about a, two weeks in where he, realized that he was feeling better. So I'll never forget that morning where he came downstairs and he's like, mom, I'm, I'm feeling better. Like I just feel better. Um, and that's most likely, I think, because he was sleeping for the first time in his life. He was sleeping through the night every night. And that was, you know, he was noticing that difference. Um, and uh, what was the other thing that we were saying? Um, yeah, no, just that, yeah. So it was really the, the sleep was the first thing that we saw improve. Right? Yeah, great. 
Oh, I love that. And wow, my heart just, right? That just tugged at the heartstrings. We all want yeah. our kids to feel good and to help yeah. them find relief. So what a great tool. And I'm so happy for you and proud of you. And so tell me what it was like with your peers or, you know, just making the adjustment. Um, and how do you feel now? I feel like this is probably the best I've ever felt. I have so much energy. Um, I always sleep great. I feel really good. Yeah. You feel like your hockey is getting better and better with every yeah. amino you take <laughs> and every power shake. Yeah. What are some of your favorite things? Uh, the apothecary, the uh, dark berry protein, and the yellow digest. Yeah, I love this too. Have you ever mixed the... Um, dark berry protein with the epigenous kids. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yep. So, well, great. Anything else that you want to add? Like, how do you feel about, um, is this just your lifestyle now? <laughs> yeah. It. I mean, I never go to hockey without like uh, taking my super uh, superfoods first. And then my mom will put superfoods in my water. So it's just uh, just part of our life now. Great. And you feel good about that? It's and actually, wanna... um, I just wanted to add there that was so amazing is that really the superfood lifestyle is really what led Jordan to become 100% plant-based and plant-based really works best for him. But he was really reluctant, you know, because it's not, it just wasn't the way that he had, you know, started growing up, right? learning because we didn't always eat as well. I mean, I, you know, we, we tried to do the best that we could, but you know, there was definitely some foods that he got used to eating from a young age um, that weren't really good for him. And um, it was really when he started to feel better with the superfood that he was like, well, I'm not willing to not feel good anymore. So I want to feel like this all the time. And it was really, it came from him, which I think is really what for me, I believe is what's going to make it sustainable, right? Because it was really a choice that he made. It was on offer already. I mean, we were already eating about 90% plant-based, but um, that other 10% really came from him. And I think that 10% is stronger than the 90% that I was providing Absolutely. them with because it's, yeah, it's from within. Jordan, do you help your friends transition now that don't have different diagnoses <laughs> that might make them want to switch? I try to give as much information to them. Like when they're having a Gatorade, I'll tell them that all that's in there is just sugars and chemicals, but not everyone wants to like know the truth about how to eat healthy. That's right. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. We're also very proud of you. And we really appreciate you answering these questions, honestly, and good luck to you and everything you've got going on. And I want to bring Nathan up. So Nathan, I heard that you are a huge advocate for healthy eating and glyphosate education. You're 10 years old. Do you want to tell me what, um, what that's all about and how you got interested? Well, it all started really when I... Um, come a little closer to the, oh, okay. to the computer because we can't hear you. It all started really when I, when I like, saw my friend doing all this we still can't hear you so let's see maybe put him on your lap mom come over here you need to be like in the place sorry about um, that didn't mean to interrupt your flow now we've got you okay so yeah tell us tell us how you got to be such a big advocate and, and was, educator it all really started because i've seen my friends on uh, zoom when i was doing online schooling they would all bring on like orange crushes chips and I would always, I would always, like, whenever we would have a call after the, after the day, I would always tell them that there's this inside and it's not that good for you. But they never really listened. So I always kept on trying to convince them and showing them. And I told her, and I told my, one of my friends are actually interested. And, and uh, her mom, her mom listening so then I, she was talking to me about it and I said if you want you can to contact my mom for more information and, Love it. and I used to like always ask my mom if I can buy uh, lunch at the cafeteria at school but now I look at it I'm like I don't even want that like what is in there that's so great 
Yeah, like, that's a great question for your friends, right? Because it's not trying to make them do something or change their mind, but just even like, what's in it? Like, do you even know what's in that? I love that approach. And so yeah. is, are you excited because of what your brother went through or did you have your own health challenges? I have my own health challenges, actually. Every winter, I used to get eczema. And now I, now I don't get it anymore. It's, it's like gone. I don't, I don't come back. And your asthma, too. Yeah, and my asthma. Uh, my asthma was a really difficult challenge for me when I was, like, about six or seven. No, yeah. like, six or five. So now, now I look back and I see myself and I'm... I, I'm way better than I was before. I love that. I love that you can see that and that you're connected to your body. And so what are you passionate about right now? Is there anything that you're doing in your life that's exciting you? You play sports or are you um, giving talks about glyphosate somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I actually do sports. I do, I do soccer. I mean, well, yeah, I do soccer during the summer, hockey and martial arts. Jiu-jitsu. Awesome. And how do you feel? Like, do you feel like you have energy? Three, that's three sports. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, when, like when we're in jujitsu and we're doing combat, I, I always have the fast movement than my opponent because, because my superfoods, it always makes me faster and a little bit stronger. That's right. Oh, well, good for you. Is there anything else that you want to tell the kids out there that might be listening or that mom might want to add in too? Yeah. Yeah, I just, um, these superfoods, you know, for the, I mean, so I'm a, I'm also a holistic nutrition and health coach, right? And I specialize in family nutrition. Um, and it's, it, it started as a passion for, it really started as a passion. And my why is my kids, right? My, I wanted to, you know, teach them this way of life. Um, I, it was really important for me, not just because of the you know, the, um, the health issues that they were, that they had at the time, but also because I wanted to empower them. I wanted them to know that, you know, there's so much that they can do, um, just to be healthy. Right. And, and that nutrition is such an important part of that. Um, not just for our physical health, but for the health, uh, our emotional and spirit too. Right. Um, and so this, this, this has just helped so much. It's aligned so beautifully. Um, and it's opened up um, so much more than I could have imagined because for them, this is fun. It's something they can get involved with, right? It's not opening up a pill bottle and, you know, taking a chewable vitamin. This is so much more than that. You know, they get to peel, they love to peel away the, the stickers and see exactly what's in each, each superfood. They love to prepare their own. They love to mix and match them. They love to share them with their friends. So this is like, this has been a beautiful way of really getting them involved because, that's the way that it's going to be sustainable is that, you know, it's not something I'm telling them to do. It's something that they're doing on their own and they're enjoying so much so that they're sharing it with others. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't awesome hope sharing. for more. Awesome. And check out the chat because you're getting so much love and thank yeah, you so much for you. being here and thank the boys for us. I mean, wow, what a great interview, right? And guys pop some questions for them in the comments because at the end we can, you know, address those and how how many of you are inspired right now by these kids? <laughs> yeah, there's some love down there for you. So thanks for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to um, Carmela. And Carmela, will you share with us your in your input on this subject and some of the things that you noticed and your tips for helping kids and families? transform and stay healthy this winter oh well so you caught me crying guys so oh. <laughs> I was having a call and I gave up but you know what um timing is perfect you guys are making my dreams come true a hundred percent with a million mom movement <laughs> so anyone who's come into this community because you've had a long history of childhood health issues <laughs> sorry and then seeing all the healing that's happening because of the education, it is so important. Oh my God, I don't know how to stop. <laughs> okay. So it's so important what we're doing here. I can't even tell you to take it seriously because the future generations depend on what we're doing. 
And it starts with us as moms, the caregivers. It starts with us healing our bodies and showing them what's possible. And that you're not passing on this generational trauma that the companies all around us are really perpetuating for us all. So it not only tugs on my heart, it's like a DNA thing. It's, it's in my DNA that I'm supposed to be doing just this. And if we are not acting with activism for our children, then they're being marketed, <laughs> sorry, they're being marketed and it's, it's up to us. So I really hope that, you know, we see this next generation of superfood entrepreneurs sharing the message as a hope for us all as parents to see what we can do, how we can influence. And we have to be alpha. We cannot allow them you know, with social media and everything taking them over, we have to set the stage at home. Home is where everything starts. I don't care about the culture, where you come from initially, just from this community, whatever you're gleaning from it, take it into just today, start today with what all these different mamas are doing. Start these conversations, have conversations. It starts at home over dinner. It starts with preparing food, it starts with shopping with food. Um, my daughter had a, a, a transformation when she hit puberty, and uh, it really helped my family to see that that hormonal health and balance comes through food as medicine, because um, she was so hooked. She was so addicted to cheese and sugar, and she was having bumps in her skin, eczema, and she was overweight. And I said to her, you know, are you willing to make a shift? And she she was. She started with a colonic and enema. And then she went into the core five religiously daily. And that's what she's been on. And what a transformation. She had a full on glow up. All of her friends and family members all were like, wow, you know, and, and that's what these kids need is the confidence that, you know, Christina's, um, I'm sorry, um, the first guest's um, children, Erica. Erica. Yeah, it was really transformative. You could see it and see how healthy. So, um, yeah. I'm I'm really proud of our community, what we're all doing together here. And I pass the word. Awesome. Well, welcome Naeva to chime in here and drop some love. Look at the love in the comments for you. Like, right, we're all feeling it. And do you guys notice the common theme here is getting the kids connected, reconnected, right? We can leave healthy cues and influence. And then just like when they're not feeling good or when they eat something and they crash, you know, just drawing the connection so that they can start drawing the connection because they will, and it's important. We really are shifting DNA and it's possible. And that's why we're here. So Naeva. Yes, thank you so much. Wow, such incredible shares and loving getting to hear straight from the kids and the next generation. And I really tried to get my boys to record and they're just so camera shy that it was just a really awkward um, little video clip that I'm not going to share. But what I will share is that my boys did go through a phase. When Kainoa was born, I was introduced to Perium. So it's been eight years. So he's always had it in his life. He literally weaned onto Power Shake from breast milk onto power shake. And that was like his thing. Like when he first tried the power shake, it's, it's been his true love ever since he loves his power shake after school, before school, whenever he can get it, he loves it. And it's something just so incredible to get vegetables into our kids every day, especially that we know that they're organic and grown in good soil and all those things. Those are all things we can rest us assured of with Purium. And so I love hearing from all these kids what their favorites are. And so when I asked Kainoa this morning, his favorite is the Epigenius Kids and the Peppermint Bark, which unfortunately is only in stock seasonally. And I should have stocked up more on that if I would have known that was his favorite, but that's okay. Cause we're going to revert to the Cocoa Mint Spirulina, which is one of my favorites. Um, and then for Myron, who's 14, he's had this in his life since he was eight years old or seven years old. So when over that course of time, he went from loving Purium and wanting it, you know, before and after school, like Kainoa is now to, you know, kind of like going back and, um, you know, being 
coming of age, you know, being a little bit rebellious, wanting to eat a little bit more junk food or things that aren't so good for him. And he actually noticed the difference in his self and his energy and his mood as well as his skin. And so it didn't take him long to turn around and say, mom, you know, my skin's really bad. And I'm like, yeah, I have lots of things to help you. And so he loves taking the chlorella every day and the aminos and the super xanthan. He's also big into football. So he likes to take the joint flex, the revive it all, the super lights and um, several others that I think the heart aid also he takes. There's lots that he takes to support himself pre and post workout that really works for him. And so, and, and he is coming to the point now where he's like, mom, I think I want to do a cleanse. So I'm really excited because he's 14. And I think we're both going to do the ultimate lifestyle transformation after Christmas together. Cause it's something he's really been leaning into. So most recently he's been doing all of those things pretty much daily. So he's doing like the core 10 um, because he's taking all the stuff to help his joints and ligaments and his energy levels and his sore muscles from pre and post workout. So that's really working for him. And I also have a couple of videos. Do you want me to show Taz's videos? Michelle, do we have time for that? I think we do. And then we can do the, the call to action and the pledge and wrap up. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this screen real quick. We're going to watch Lucho, who is eight years old, and they are currently on a flight. So we pre-recorded these and let's hear what Lucho has to say. Hello, Michelle. Okay, so you're eight years old and you've been on superfoods for the past six years. So I get this question all the time that the parents ask me, how do you get your kids to be on superfoods? How are they dealing with their friends, you know, in their everyday life? Maybe you can give us an example. So, for first, I read all labels. For example, parents, after my soccer practice, parents bring juice boxes and snacks for their kids. I look at the ingredients, 20 grams of sugar. So bad. And also... I, I bring my juice bar that has my coconut water, I will digest, and superfoods make me confident. Thank you so much, Rachel. I can see that the superfoods do make you confident. And how about behavior? Do you find that you're more focused in school as well? Yes. So what advice would you have to a parent watching this right now that they want to encourage their child to be on superfoods? So the advice I would give is don't be like always have your child to try new stuff and super superfoods are not that bad. So just give your kids some superfoods. And maybe give it a try because it's better than maybe because it's better than candy, juice boxes, sugar and all those junk food. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Lucho. Love Lucho. So let's go over to Kiara, who is 14, I believe. So what do I think of all of these superfoods? Well, I think superfoods are amazing. I bring them with me everywhere I go. And as an athlete, I always have them on me. I have my juice bar and I have my candy pizzas, my MVP sports, my shake and also as a teenager um my skin breaks up i hope we lost it well i hope you guys took some notes because there's a lot of products you know we recommend the ult plus immune the family nutrition pack the kids immune shield of course the core four plus immune the epigenius family um, and uh, Naeva, I'll give it back to you and you can um, extrapolate on that if you want or do call to action. Awesome. So yeah, that was Kiara. And, you know, she was just getting out all the things that she uses for herself to help herself stay healthy every single day and as she's in sports. So let me just pull up the other page where we have our call to action. Give me just one quick minute. And if you guys want to go ahead and grab your phones and do this with us, we really want to encourage you to also leave the comments, right? We are a movement of many, and we really appreciate you being here, taking it on, doing the calls to action with us, and 
sharing your voice along with us so that we can lift the whole movement. Absolutely. And Carmela, did you want to do the call to action today or did you want me to go ahead and go with it? Oops, sorry. I might have said the wrong person for call to action. I do have it queued up so I can go ahead and pull it up. So like she was saying, if you can pull out. There we go. We got her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was prepared to, to share it. No problem. Yeah, so for those of you following us on the Million Mom Movement Affairs Fridays, we always end with a call to action, which is our activism, where we'll ask you to participate with us. So first we had the petition against glyphosate with Cheerios, and now we're moving you to the detoxproject.org, where in the reports tab, you're going to find the poison in our daily bread. So Henry Rollins was a guest speaker um, here on the Million Mom Movement YouTube channel. So take a look at our interview with him too and check out his website. We're going to lead you to the report. We've now gotten into the protein bars, which is really exciting. Protein bars and shakes. So the very first one at the top, the brand name is called On It. I don't know if you guys have heard of this brand. Drop a one in the comments if you have. I wasn't too familiar until I went onto their Instagram, which is what we're going to guide you to. And in the chat, um, there, what we're going to do is in the Million Mom Movement official, we're going to be putting what you can post roughly something to the, to the effect of um, sharing. If you go to that first post, Nave, I actually created a comment there that you can show. Um, and the Million Mom Movement did as well. So you can mimic what we have there, but make it in your first person voice. So if you wanna just share, cause they are the first on their list in the detoxproject.org that has the highest parts per billion in this category. And they have a lot of followers. They've over 550,000 followers on Instagram. So they impact a large community in the fitness industry. And so what I did in that post, and I'll share it into the face, um, Facebook group, the Million Mom Movement Official, is that please make your own post on this one, uh, one post so that we're all flooding it with information and just be kind, kind to them, you know, um, where and we say, did you know that your chocolate protein bar, plant-based protein bar has 134 parts per billion of glyphosate, the active ingredient Roundup, and you, you impact and influence a lot of people, would you be open to considering the sourcing of your ingredients to be certified organic and to look for glyphosate? So together we're stronger and you can make a post or a story about it and show people your activism. We would love to see your tag. So hashtag us, I am the Million Mom Movement or Million Mom Movement so that we can see that you've done this. And we would love to have you guys participate with us weekly. Thank you, pass the word. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carmela, I appreciate it. And I would love to invite one of our mamas on the call up or if you have a kiddo with you to read the pledge. Naiva is gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen. And I would love it if you could just raise your hand or Sherry, if you want to read it, or if somebody on the call would be so generous. Sure, I can read it. Okay. Since it was, supposed to, be my, since it was supposed to be my boys, but they got a little shy to read it. So. <laughs> they got shy, I'll, I'll, I'll step in for them. So go to the millenniummommovement.info, everyone, and make sure that you join the movement officially. And that's where you can also find our pledge. So we're going to pull it up here, and Ms. Sherry is going to read it for us. I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels and educate myself on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I am committed to sharing this movement of many. I am the Million Mom Movement. Love it. And we are the Million Mom Movement, and we invite you to our official Facebook group. Please join us every Friday for health and wealth focused presentations. Be sure to invite your friends and your community members and come meet our community members. And next, well, actually, our next call is going to be with 
Carmela, um, do you want to chime in for a moment, Ms. Carmela, and tell us about your Lunch and Learn coming up, your special guest? Oh, I think we need to unmute you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I'd love to invite people next Wednesday. We host every third Wednesday of the month, a lunch and learn. So we dive deep into a topic that the field needs. And we haven't spoken much about holistic dentistry. I think a lot of people don't connect nutrition with tooth health. And so um, I've had, oof, I've had, a, I've had some history with this guy. So um, buckle up because then um, my guest speaker is my surgeon and she has three clinical practices in the United States. She's an educator. She has a YouTube channel and she has this book called Chew on This, but Don't Swallow. Her name is Dr. Blanche Groob. Um, and I'm very excited about it. So please invite everyone you know. We have a Facebook event if you just search um, Lunch and Learn, Million Mom Movement, and December you're going to find it. And please RSVP, because the more energy we have in these invites, people are more compelled to see it as a, as a greater community. We need to grow our community. So please RSVP, share it on, and we'll see you next week. Love it. Yep. And I'm so excited for that too. Please follow us on Instagram. All the links to the replays are in the link in our bio and also um, on our YouTube channel. And please use the Million Mom hashtag, Million Mom Movement, Hashtag I am the million mom movement. Hashtag we are the million mom movement to be reposted on our page. Pictures of kids and families and teen posts and lifestyles and mom lives and superfoods and recipes. Tag it all. Stories as well around your activism on glyphosate. So important. Again, reach back out to the person who invited you here if you're a guest. And for everybody in the field, we look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye for now.